Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the regularly scheduled Sunderland Select Board meeting. It is uh, 6.33 p.m. <clears throat> and we've got a few uh, items on our agenda tonight. We've got uh, our, we're going to discuss uh, the beginning of talking about our FY21 goals. We've got uh, the Town Administrator Performance Review and their F21 FY21 goals. It's it's already been how long now, Jeff? Five years, I think. Feels like ten. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, we're going to discuss 120 North Main Street. We've got some employee appointments because it's that time of year. We've got our exciting minutes approval and, of course, our COVID-19 update and any select board and town administrator updates. And then we've got, um, I see we've got an item for our COVID-19 finances update on there as well too, so. And then of course, uh, we've got public comment in there if we've got any. Um, so, <clears throat> so our first one is every year around this time after we've had our annual elections, we usually start to talk about any goals that we have as a select board for the upcoming year. So this is sort of the, the kickoff of it. Um, and we're gonna start talking about that. And usually we, uh, Probably, probably go over a, a few meetings and then come up with our goals. And it's always interesting to see what we, what we like to do and then what gets thrown at us and gets in the way too. So, but, um, <clears throat> anybody have anything they want to discuss on the goals at all right now or? All right. So David, I, I, would, th I would throw in there, uh, we have four, and it sounds kind of um, mundane, but we have for the last nearly 10 years uh, tried to uh, find ways to continue to reduce our energy footprint. That's and good. we've, we set a goal a number of years ago to be between three and 5% energy reduction on the consumption side year on year you know, driving it down to, you know, where we could actually afford to be uh, a net zero. And I want to make sure that that stays on uh, our goals. Um, and I know this is a straw man right now and that we'll be talking about this over the next couple of weeks. Um, the other piece I'd like to have is a review of the uh, financial services provided by the COG and how our not targeting them specifically, but how are we doing in that accounting function and how are we providing our uh, partnering uh, services uh, from the town's perspective? I want to have that uh, vetted so that we don't, we don't run into any particular big trouble. Um, so those two jump straight up. Uh, we know we have some grants ahead of us. I want to think about those as the straw man is developed, but those two, energy and then finance, both jump immediately to mind. Okay. Yeah, those are, and especially the uh, the finance one, that's something that we've kind of reviewed over the years too. So, um, right. yeah, that's important. And and talking about grants, I did see there was a, uh, we've got a new um, grant for um, essentially sidewalks and things like that, I noticed that was uh, put out there too. So we can, maybe we can talk about that one a little later on. Mm -hmm. um, but that, that was an interesting new thing that the governor threw out there. So great point. All right. Um, <clears throat> so now we've got our town administrator performance review and FY 21 goals. So I don't know. I don't know if you have anything off the top of your head that you want to talk about at all, Jeff or whatever, but, um, goal wise, you're probably, still busy digging out from all the COVID stuff too and everything and all the day-to-day -day fun, but. Um. Yeah, I think that that, that was w one of the things that came to top of mind is um, where I'm able to try to be more proactive instead of reactive. I think um, maybe a difficult time to be proactive with things changing as quickly as they have been, but uh, Certainly a, a goal that I would set for myself is, is to get more ahead of things rather than, than reacting to what comes at me. Yep. And I think we're at, we're at your, the six month review, I guess at that point, right? 
Are we uh, that far in? Not or? quite. It started in February, so that would be August. But we're getting, okay. getting there. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that'll be coming up. <clears throat> so, David, you want to? You want to? Uh, or David and Tom, you want to talk about a member of the board to be the liaison to talk with uh, Jeff about you know how we as a community and board are doing and how he is uh, town administrator uh, feels both the fit is and uh, how do we do compared to the hiring? Yeah, that's that's a good point. <clears throat> Anybody, uh, anything, Tom? Mr. Chair, are you up for it? Sure. Yeah. Can do that. You want to set a timeline on that, David? And then Jeff? Like Tuesday? No, I kid. I kid. Yeah. <laughs> no, we should. Yeah. Um, oh, let's sorry. See. I realized my little videos. There I am. There you go. Okay. I thought I touched that thing. So I think a, a timeline probably with it within, I'd suggest within the month that right. helps with uh, tying in some of the strategic pieces that are the board's goals, you know, are they aligned with, you know, uh, Jeff's performance and um, areas of improvement that uh, collectively we can all uh, better from. Yeah. Do you, do you want to do like July 15th? What do you think about that? Cause that, then that still keeps us a little out from the six month point. It's my dad's birthday. It's a great day. Oh, there you go. Nice. How about does that sound good to you, Jeff? Yep. Great. All right. All right. Great. We'll have that set by then. All right. <clears throat> Anything else on uh, on the town administrator? You good, Jeff? <laughs> great. All right. Um, and so our next topic is 120 North Main Street. And I see that we've kind of reached a really a critical milestone in that project, which is kind of fantastic. Um, <clears throat> did you want to like highlight anything that we uh, on that, Jeff, and like kind of recap where we are with that? Yes. So uh, I believe it was late late last year or early this year uh, RDI submitted for the one stop application with the Department of Housing and Community Development and um, just last week the the application was accepted um, so that that's a pretty major major milestone I think that was the um, the the one thing holding up the the transfer of the property yep. um, and so there's going to there's going to be a lot more i think picking up on that on that as far as the development and the construction um there are some things that i think we're going to have to do paperwork wise regarding the affordability component and um how we're going to define that for the community um and we did get our our six month update from rdi which was included in the packet and is available on the website um right. that goes through all of this um so yeah i think i think it's you know still slated for for construction uh in the spring yeah, and i think one of the things i mentioned is they'll have they'll start to look for a general contractor and everything i think for that as well right so that's uh, so that's good. So we'll actually finally we'll actually start to see some things happening over the next year, which is really nice. And I think uh, I think that's an important milestone that that the board the board over the past and the town has been really striving to achieve. And I think it's it's a really good thing for the local area too to get some nice local affordable senior housing. <clears throat> Tom, do you want to weigh in on the application piece, or do you want me to speak to it? Oh, go ahead, Scotty. I, I, I just want to say that I just think that I go back and I just want to thank Janet and Stan Bashinsky after their mom passed away. Um, you, you know, we, we made a telephone call to them. Um, and, and sometimes there's a little things that happen in the background. And that telephone call um, basically looked at their willingness and, and don't 
I hope no one gets it wrong, but if if Stan and uh, Jan, if they didn't want to sell to that the, to the town, they could have taken any offer and in, in a many they would have received many offers for that piece. Um, so Stan and Jan, um, they had the conversation, um, and they waited for the town. And I just want to thank them because if it, if if they hadn't been on board right from the beginning, it would have never would have happened. So, yep, that's true. That was, that's really what kicked it all off, which is great. Well, that that that's that's the genesis of it, and uh, rightly so. The history that shouldn't be forgotten about how we got to the point we're at. I think in RDI's uh, Franklin Regional Housing Development, excuse me, Franklin Regional Housing Authority's letter to us, uh, they also pointed out that uh, the the fact that the first application for a one-stop grant, meaning fully funded, was unusual and something to be celebrated. It is, Scott. I, 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 I usually I that know. opens up another funding round. So you got to go back yeah, out. Yeah. You got to find more funding. This was like, nope, one stop. Yep. And that was. But, but Scott, if I could, and and, and David, I, I just want to yeah. reiterate. Um, people ask me, well, how, why, and how do you think it it, it occurred? And I said, A, the town of Sunderland, like, unlike a lot of communities, has a housing plan. Right. That, that was the, we, we had a housing plan. That was number one. The, the second big thing that was in our favor is that the town owned the land. The, the town bought the house and the land with CPA money. Um, and then we offered an additional $100,000 to RDI as a further commitment to the project. Um, RDI and, and the zoning board, planning board, they, they took care of all the permitting issues. Everything, everything was set. You know, there was, there was a concern by one of the, res, uh, one of the neighbors and, and that neighbor, um, and, and I can't say enough about that. It sat down with with RDI and worked worked out their differences to make it more palatable. There, so a lot of things came together for this to happen. And and I just think it's an it's 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 it is it it's it has not been. We haven't seen anything like it. And and matter of fact, everybody that we talk to in housing will tell you that they don't give money. There's no money for senior housing. So. It, right. It's a big, big thing. Right. It, it, it's a big need. I, I think when we talk about it, I think like partnerships and cooperation, those two things kind of stand out to like what's really helped us progress and the desire for everybody in the town to get something done on it. That, that uh, Mr. Chair, if I could, and, and the fact that it was a, a robust public process. We had three yeah. town meetings. We had lots of ZBA hearings. There was lots of give and take. Um, that community input for or uh, in consideration of changes was really, really helpful. And I hope that and when, when, and if, well, not if, when there's a ribbon cutting, that there's a review, hint, town administrator, uh, of what a good friendly bee can forty look, uh, what a good friendly forty bee can look like, and yeah, it can be clunky and awkward. People can be opposed to it. People can look for changes in it. Yeah, got it. But oh. we're still doing it. It sets a nice contract for for other forty bee projects. Let's hope. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Anything else on uh, 120 North Main for now? I mean, we'll be back, I'm sure, talking about it numerous times as we make progress through it. So that'll be nice to see the, the different milestones on that as we go along. Yeah. <clears throat>
That and, and actually, and, and that'll be kind of going along probably right around the same time that the 120 North Main Street project is going on, though, it seems. So that'll be good. If, if Boy, if all, all the stars line up, it's going to be busy on North Main Street. And it will be exactly. a, a significant change for not the roadscape so much, but for the sense of community in this area. Again, looking at it from the center of town-ish, whatever you want to call it, the work that's done on School Street, the work that's done on 120 North Main, the conclusion, execution. Everybody hates execution of projects. I do too. (laughs) Stuff gets moved and wrecked and it all, all gets put back together. I get it. But at the end of all of it, this part of town, uh, this part of the town of Sunderland, uh, will be uh, improved upon for uh, a generation easily. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> all right. And next up on our agenda, we've got employee appointments. And we have our 2020 town employee appointments. And usually we do that as a block. So Jeff, are there any substitutes in here? If I could, Mr. Chair. Yeah. I'm just looking through. Um, I believe that um, Walter Jennings was hired before you made the appointment last year. Um, And highway uh, two temporary laborers were added. Um, Gabrielle Kaczynski and Sydney Ewell. Okay. Um, I think everybody else is pretty much set. Um, the uh, still waiting for um, an alternate plumbing and gas inspector, mm-hmm. um, but we're working on that. All right. <clears throat> All right. We have a a motion for the slate that we've got here. Motion. All right. I'll second. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on that one, Jeff. All right. Jeff, did any, if I could, Mr. Chair, Jeff, yep. did anyone we reached out to say no, we're not interested this year? Um, I think that the, the only one was the alternate plumbing and gas inspector. Mm. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. And next up, we have our minutes from Monday, June 8th. And we covered a lot of a lot of things last week. There was a lot of ground there, Mr. Chair. There is. We had a, a, the annual reorganization of the board. We had our appointments. And then we had the annual town meeting recap. And of course, we had our COVID uh, state of emergency update. And we had select board updates, town administrator updates, and then our Fabulous town clerk uh, had some items that you talked about on the public comment. So <clears throat> we have motion. a motion. All right. And we have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Three to zero on the minutes. All right. And next up, I see Caitlin right in the center of my screen there for our COVID-19 update. Right in the middle of the Hollywood squares of the Brady Bunch, depending on how you nice. look at it, right? <laughs> yes. All right. What, uh, what's going on this week? Well, um, per my last email on June 10th from the public health nurse doing the weekly COVID cases, mm-hmm. um, you know, I don't even know if I should say this. I guess I'll have to say it. But everybody start knocking. We've had right. no new cases <laughs> That's good. in three weeks. So I know we're just the hamlet of Sunderland, but yeah. you know. That's important, yeah. I th- you know, the social distancing and everything else. We are, our little, our little carved out area has had no new cases in three weeks. Excellent, that's good. So, that is that's good. Very good. Uh, you know. Yeah. Once again, I'm not telling everybody to go running around without masks on yeah. and go kissing your neighbors. No kissing any neighbors. 
<laughs> Here we go. But that's a, just a positive. Um, so um, as far as opening parks and uh, playground, the playgrounds, the um, we I was on a conference call uh, this uh, in the past few days, and I was speaking with Ben, town administrator. The the second phase does open up recreational facilities. It opens up recreational facilities with some guidelines that we cannot meet, okay. but uh, the guidelines of wiping down surfaces um, multiple times, at, at least daily. Well, we don't have the, st the school doesn't have the staff for that, especially d throughout the summer. So the summer, right, right. But, you know, um, and, uh, but what I did was I, I checked in, in those got in the opening, in the phase two openings, they actually do have a, um, an exception. And the exception is for, uh, there's several, but there's for secondary, uh, elementary and secondary school um, facilities has, an, has the exception. And they say, it says with the exception, it says you, know, you can develop a plan with public health, with your public health department. Okay. Now, technically, A, we are the public health department. B, what I did was I sent an email out to the Department of Public Health. And, and uh, I said, listen, we're a small community. This is our only playground. Right. One, I don't want to keep it closed all summer because we can't wash it down every day. Two, I also don't want to open it up just because and then have, you know, um, put anybody at risk. But I said to them, you know, if we put up proper signage saying playground, you know, the contact surfaces are being cleaned maybe once a week. I talked to Ben about that. Yeah. Once a week, I said, you know, this is out in the sun. <laughs> the surfaces get awfully hot. Sure. Especially uh, the metal ones, right? The, you know, it goes up well over 100 degrees. Um, it, you know, it's out in the sun, but the, everything we've read is the contact is not as virulent or, you know, is, is, is it's the, it's the droplet. It's the face to face. Right. Like respiratory know, transmission. Respiratory, yep. Right. Um, yep. so if we put up the signage, if we, um, you know, have them, the proper mask wearing and all that, that's, you know, I think that we're basically covering what needs to be covered. Okay. Ben happened to send me, so I do think opening, you know, us doing the official opening, I think would be okay. Um, I okay. You know, discussed it with the town administrator, discussed it with Ben, Ben discussed it with superintendent since it is school property. Legally we're accepted. There is an exception. Okay. But I just wanted to still cover, you know, we still want to um, put out as healthy an environment as possible. So I think proper signage saying that, you know, you can wipe, wipe down high touch, you know, we would advise maybe wiping down, if you are concerned, wipe down right. high touch areas, um, right. you know, before your children use it or something, you know, we could put up, you know, we'll maybe come up with some good signage. Um, I did notice that I got a call from the police chief, I think on Sunday, maybe Saturday morning, I can't remember, um, that there was a soccer team using the soccer field at the, uh, at the school, plus about 15, 20 parents hmm. on the sidelines. Oh. Hmm. He said he, he, was, he didn't know, I mean, do we send an officer out to throw up a tape measure to find out if the parents were six feet away from each other? You know, I said that, um, you know, we didn't put the, the school didn't put up the field is open on their website. We didn't put it up on our town website. Right. Maybe the soccer coach read that recreational facilities are open. Um, you know, 
they are open for the governor. So I, I, you know, I, my advice to the chief was not to go clear out the soccer field at that point, because I mean, we'd have to then post somebody there as a monitor to make sure everybody was socially distancing. Right. And are we really going to do that? Is this what we're going to start doing? And is do the police officer the person who's going to be doing this? I, I don't, I mean, I, I, we made it as a quick decision right then and there to just, you know, let them go. I think we need to just put guidelines up everywhere. We need to just put That's what I was gonna say. up saying yep, some signage. social distancing. Yep. As I noticed, um, I was on a trail um, up in Deerfield and I noticed that the state had put out some signs, kind of like the campaign signs that you see out, you know, like that plastic corrugated on the little metal thing um, with basically distancing guidelines, like when you're on the trail. So maybe something like that, you know, we get out there. Oh, hey, Jim. Yep, I see Jim's Hi. got, yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Do we know that this was an organized soccer team? He, um, I guess an officer uh, called the chief, the chief called me, and uh, he said it, well, there was a coach and there were younger people, so. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, organized, organized teams are supposed to get permission through the principal to use the facilities at the school. Mm -hmm. um, and theoretically, our, our fields down by the town office building as well um, comes through Cindy sometimes, Jeff as the town administrator sometimes, eventually to me, is there a scheduling conflict? Is this okay? Um, and, you know, the town should be requiring them to ask for facility use, providing a uh, uh, insurance liability binder, naming the town of Sunderland as additionally insured. So it's like a permit, they need a permit. And then um, we need to have the guidelines as we have from DPH about what the facilitator and the operator's responsibilities are in terms of keeping social distance, uh, spectators are to be limited to one per participant. Um, the group size is 12, including coaches. Um, and spectators have to keep, have, wear masks. The players do not while they're doing the activity. I mean, the guidelines are they're all there. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and that's partly why I'm on this conversation because we've got uh, a yoga class that wants to happen and we've got a softball team that wants to use the field and I'm thinking of doing some uh, small group things in July and August since people won't be going on vacations um, for uh, two or three weeks for small groups of about eight and probably not charging because uh, there won't really be any cost to us. Um, there won't be shirts, there won't be umpires, there won't be new equipment, um, et cetera. Anyway, I, I think that that is that is great. I think that maybe we should put up a sign saying, you know, use of the field is by permit only and give the contact number. Right. And then in that quote unquote permit, maybe we don't have to charge a permit fee, but they need to then get all the regulations. We know who's going to be where. At and I think they have the, the guidelines. And making sure we get it on the website too. I think that'll be important. Have that information up there as well. So um, I Ben um, emailed me a newspaper article from Amherst that says the Amherst uh, Parks Department is not going to be uh, wiping down their equipment daily. They put it in the paper and they kind of said it's a use at your own risk. Yep thing you know they'll you know I, I i talked to ben and said maybe we could do it weekly we could do a spray weekly um and then they also said that their fields are open but uh i just uh i just had it highlighted um but that their uh their fields were open but not for um 
that their playing fields are open. The town's recreational fields will not be closed, but organized team sports are not being allowed on them. Okay. They are. Uh, well, see, I'm, I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm imagining how yeah. they're going to, yeah. you know, do that. Um, but I think it'll be just important to make sure we have signage up, you know, and the website information up so that, that we make that as clear, you know, and then like you're saying, maybe a line in there about, you know, bring your own hand sanitizer or wipes or something, you know, if you want something right. along those lines. So I'll talk. Uh, Jeff, if we can have another call, I'll talk to Ben and, uh, and then um, Jim, maybe I'll talk to you about um, signage just to put at uh, the field behind the um, town hall and then the field by the softball field and the soccer field by the school. School. Mm -hmm. And uh, just so we get the right, I, I want to get the right words. You know, um, you know, like I'll, I'll say permit, but we don't have to charge a fee or anything. It's just to get them the right. Well, they, there's, a, there's a protocol in place. There's a facilities use form that they have to fill out and, with Ben. And that includes okay. they have to show what, what insurance they have and provide an insurance binder. But it's not always happening. I know whenever I have you, I'm letting some people use Merit Field for softball, I'm requiring all of that. They fill out a form, they're getting us the insurance binder so the town's covered, um, and they're paying a fee. Um, okay. And we're doing the same thing in the center of town. For the most part, we do have a couple camping groups that have been using the property like one night a year uh, or two nights a year over a number of years, and I, I don't think we've been charging them anything. Okay. Um, but um, you know, the, the, the real problem is if you have organized teams using a field, um, and something happens, um, you have liability as a town. And if we're not getting those insurance binders, uh, it, you know, right. and, and that's an ongoing protocol anyway, COVID aside, right? That's, that's our standard, it's, it's you know, ideally. It's supposed to be everything at the school goes through Ben. Um, right. I even have to put in facility requests uh, with Ben. Um, you know, and I, I list the town's insurance as the liability if it's a town recreational activity. But for any other group, you know, okay. I think we have liability. And if it's just a pickup game or so just a group of kids playing, that's different. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. It's public space. Okay. But you, but you, but we still do have the guidelines, which are limiting groups to twelve. Right. Did somebody have a comment? I thought I heard. I was gonna. I was gonna ask Mr. Chair if I could. So. Yeah. Oh, I think it, we just lost your audio. Oh, yep, there you go. I can see yeah. it. Um, oh, it's oh. He's Cyloning. That's pretty <laughs> good. That was, that, yeah. <laughs> nice. So I, I'd like to ask if I could. It seemed like there was two. There are two areas here to discuss. One under uh, own use call him for bring, uh, and for and bring up. Second is what kind of language you want to have on kind of global signing. So there's right. asking for help and encouraging involvement here, right? It's like, hey, everybody, you can use this. Less than twelve has, has has been laid out. Less than twelve, one participant, one one observer per participant, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Oh. There we go. Hey. I can see you. No, okay. no audio. So are we back Ooh. again? Is this in the next room? 
He is. <laughs> he, he could just walk yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And it's not my machine is coming out. Every time the machine being recorded. Anyway, long story short, is there a way we can combine those two efforts? Reinforce what the right. town requirements are as well as encourage involvement with the most up-to-date kind of information. And maybe we don't have opportunity to wipe down gym equipment every single day. I get that. But, you know, I'm a concerned dad, and maybe I would bring my own stuff, right? Yeah, That's exactly. entirely possible. Feel free, to, feel free to go about your business as well. Oh. Where do you go? He's gone again. <laughs> Uh, but you guys got the gist of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think the, the, Oh. Am I the one cutting out or is it everybody? <laughs> no, it's just you. Just you, yep. Oh, good. It might be the connection. I feel good about it. <laughs> well, just it's sort of like a, a science fiction movie or something. Uh, um, did you have any any other things, Caitlin? No, I just think that um, I, I do understand um, what he's saying, and I, I think we could definitely we can definitely do that. And that's why I was just talking to Jeff and to Jim just to make sure. You know, I, before we put anything up, I'd like to make sure it's... <laughs> oh, right. So, Kate, what Caitlin? What supposed to do and be is appropriate. Right. So, so Caitlin, are there signage, are there signs that you want to put up? In, and do you have the money in the budget or... <laughs> well, I was going to jump off that bridge when I got there. Um, but I, I don't... Um, I mean, I can check with Cindy. Uh, I don't necessarily have the money. Um, we put up signs and helped um, the school put up the signs last time. Yep. Okay. Um, you know, I can, yeah, I can do that um, with Ben this time, but then we have ones over at the town hall uh, that he won't be responsible for, but we put up by the softball and by the baseball field and the soccer field. So following up on that, and maybe maybe I'll be able to stay on the channel long enough. Yeah. Are, is there sta is there standard language from the State Department of Health that called out for parks and rec, et cetera, that we're not reinventing the wheel? Well, I think I think there is, and I also think that um, some of the other towns actually have some stuff too. I was looking uh, and talking to some folks at different rec places uh, last week, and and in mm -hmm. fact today. Um, and um, so I think there's some stuff we can borrow, but there is some language around COVID and social distancing and masks and yep. hand sanitizers and that kind of thing um, for open space and rec fields and things. And um, we would just need to add that something about, you know, field use by organized activities needs right. to be, um, you know, by permission. Yep, and here's who you need to contact um, in order to, to fill out a facilities form and request permission. Um, that makes what, makes whatever. perfect sense. Yeah. And I I think we could come up with that fairly easily. Um, Excellent. It's a it seems to be a fifty fifty thing. Uh, Belchertown has opened up its playgrounds. South Hadley has opened up its playgrounds. Um, but not all of their facilities, pools and, and splash pads right. and, and things are not opening, but some are planning to later on. Northampton um, has a bunch of stuff open and a bunch of stuff closed. So it's, a, you know, it's kind of a 50-50 thing uh, in, in our area, um, it seems. So sort of a gradual rollout, I think, as they, as they can and can deal with it. Well, the, 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 the real problem is going to come in phase three because phase three is going to allow uh, games. Right. right. Right now, there's no inter-squad games, there's no scrimmages, and there's no games. 
Um, but phase three is going to uh, perhaps, because the governor has changed this as he's gone. I mean, bars were supposed to open in phase three and he pushed them to phase four now, just as an example. So it's kind of a fluid thing. Right. It, it all depends on, you know, the caseload and what thing, you know, how things are going. So. But I'm, I'm sort of looking this evening in terms of if, um, you know, I have, a, I have a, a, a softball team that wants to use Merritt Field. They've been using it in the past. They provide us with a fee. They provide us with insurance. They will provide the supervision. We will give them all the guidelines. And I will probably stop by every once in a while just to make sure that they're following those things. And then a question of, I was thinking I would wait till July to do some softball and maybe t-ball. And then in August, maybe some soccer, a couple of small groups for an hour one or two days a week, there probably won't be a fee because I don't think we're going to have any cost incurred. But so I, I just want to have a sense of can we can begin to think about doing that? Um, and we'll have to deal with the signs and, you know, all the other yeah. things. And, and I think getting some notices up as we start to roll that out on the website, Jeff, will be important too, you know. Um, and maybe when we reach like a key milestone, we could do a, you know, a a voice announcement or something like that. You know, as we approach like a big opening. <clears throat> All right. Um, did you have anything else, Caitlin? Or no, that was just it, the two things. Um, we okay. did do uh, we we did do uh, the openings. We're allowing the openings of the two pools in town. The that were they semi private. The Cliffside and Sugarloaf. Mm. Okay. However, with um, we sent out a, um, a a list of requirements. They're going to have to have the monitors. They're going to have to have six feet in between okay. the equipment. Um, they're going to have to have the masks required unless swimming. Um, and you know we have a a, a full list, and the um, inspector is going to go. Oh, there you go. The, the checks on whether okay. they're complying. So that, uh, you know, so there's definitely, it's going to look, everything's going to look different this year. Yeah. Yep. That's and it, true. it can't be, they have to be under 40% occup of the pool occupancy. Okay. All right. So. All right. Yep. All right. Thanks. Um, did you have any other topics from the recreation department you want to talk about, Jim? No, that was, that was basically it. I mean, I just want to know okay. if, if we're going to be able to go forward, we're going to need to start letting people know within the next week or so. And I do have just yep. one softball team that's, you know, ready to, to, to go at Merritt Field. They've got the insurance certificate and everything all lined up. They've been doing it in the past. So it's a question of. Yeah, as of, uh, yeah, as of today. Okay. Mm. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jim. You thank you. Me. All right. Thank you. Thanks, and, everyone. Uh, I, I talk, oh, Jeff, look, did you have something you want to say, Jeff? Just two quick things. One, um, any signage, there is CARES Act funds that can be used for that. So we just need to code it properly in accounting. And the other was, I believe that the select board took an official action to close the playground. So I didn't know if you wanted to take an Do official one. vote to allow the playground to open. Um, it, it may have been at the recommendation of the Board of Health, um, but I, I do remember that there was there was a vote. Taken. So, okay, so the Board of Health would recommend reopening the park, the playgrounds, and the recreational facilities. Okay, all right. For, for the uh, governor's phase two. Okay, do, do we have a motion for that? Motion. Uh, second, as recommended. Okay. Um, all right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero as recommended uh, by the Board of Health for opening the parks and playgrounds. Thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you, you, Caitlin. Thank you, thank Caitlin. You. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, guys. Very good. Thank you. Uh, it's going to yep. be, you're going to be getting busy with all of that as it comes up. So I know it'll be very important. Well, so, Caitlin, we'll, we'll talk. It's also yes. Okay. Absolutely, Jim. And, and just a quick apology to our viewers because we've been having Zoom issues. So a number of us have 
and it could be any one of us at any moment are disappearing and then reappearing magically in a different <laughs> square. So <laughs> I want I want to come back as Ruth Buzz as Ruth Buzzy. But yeah, there you go. <laughs> See, now your audio is fine now. So and yeah, video. right. <clears throat> I had a Wi-Fi right. chomp there going on. Anyway, regardless. There you go. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, we have ton administrator updates. We've reached the, oh, actually, I'm sorry. We have select board updates first. Um, and I do not have any this week. So I'll toss over the ball to uh, Scott or Tom. Have you got any updates? I'll set there, Dave. Okay. Uh, I would add, Mr. Chair, that this week uh, we have a follow-up meeting of the police um, union contract, mm. negotiation contract, and uh, finance team meeting, both scheduled for, I believe, Thursday. Correct, Jeff? Um, I think we're trying to reschedule that finance team meeting for Monday, but okay, getting it up. Just yep. keep keep me posted. Either way, there was there was a deferral on my part, and I want to thank the. Uh, the town administrator, as well as the uh, the police uh, chief and the union reps, uh, last week my week just went straight to hell. So when it came time to get on a conference call, there was just no way to participate. And I thank them for their flexibility, even though it was a five thirty a.m. five thirty a.m. series of email exchanges. But <laughs> thank you. Uh, bright and early. Uh, that's the way it works. Yep. All right, and then uh, and now it's it's your turn, Jeff. If you have any exciting updates for us this week, uh, a couple. We we talked about the all the work that's happening on North Main Street, and I thought that this would be a good time to just briefly lay out the North Main Street reconstruction project timeline. Um, so, hopefully, by the end of this month or July first, we're going to have the appraisal process completed. Um, and then a week following that, we're going to have to send out written offer letters for each of the people. Um, we will, of course, include a certificate of donation. If people look at it and say are feeling generous, um, they can still donate uh, those easements. Um, then in mid-August, the select board's going to have to take a vote on an order of taking um, and an easement plan. Uh, the follow several days after that, we're going to have to record the order of taking in the easement plan. Um, and then by the, another five days, um, a notice of taking and tendering payment to, to those people, um, who wish to receive just compensation for the easements. So, okay. um, the, date that the advertising for the bid is going to be September 12th. So that's really the, the day we're shooting for. And we need to sort of build in a couple weeks um, for MassDOT to do their final review that, that we did everything and checked all the boxes. So yeah. that's sort of driving the timeline. And then again, construction anticipated to happen in the spring. So I just wanted right. to, to put that out there to keep you all informed of where we are in the process and what we have coming up as well as the public. Um, and on, on the point of scheduling, um, I think that there were two things that I just wanted to touch base and, and take the select board's temperature on. Um, a public meeting for the uh, park grant application, that's, that's part of the requirement. Um, the application is due a month from today on July 15th. So I was wondering if you wanted to do it as part of the, I think we, the June 29th select board meeting. That's when there's a poll hearing scheduled. Um, combine all our, our public meetings and hearings into one. Um, or yep. if you'd prefer to do that separately um, at, on another date. Uh, how, how do you feel about that, Scott? Tom? Well, my, if I could, Mr. Chair, my, my feeling is that if you can get the, the park grant component could be uh, protracted, the poll hearing should be relatively straightforward in that there, 
not talking about a lot of re relocations on the North Main Street project. These are essentially right. height changes, making uniform density. Basically, it's going to be direct replacement in this upgrade. And according to the plans that I've seen, there's no laterals. We're not crossing the street a bunch of times. It's like, should be pretty straightforward. I think they can get done in one long night. Yeah. And and then we could probably schedule the poll hearing first, you know, and get that. That would make sense. Yeah. The poll yeah. hearing is scheduled and advertised for 630. So that, that's going to be the yep. first thing. Um, so if I could, Mr. Chair, with respect to the park grant, Jeff, we'll have to have a little bit of that pre-design work squared away. Yes. So we know what we're actually talking about. Yep, right. and, and that was um, part of the CPA, one of the CPA articles that was approved. Right. Um, and we've already had an initial meeting with um, the uh, Berkshire Design Group cool. um, okay. to, Carla, to get good. that so that there will be something to, to react to in that public meeting. Good. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, my sense, I, and I'll, ask, I'll reach out to Tom as well. My sense is if it's going to be two public, if, if it's going to be public hearings in, the, in similar context, poll hearings should be relatively innocuous. Park, park hearing, you know, there's a lot of motivation around what's going on at the river. We should schedule them to make sure we don't slip on the timeline. We are dangerously close to um, the 11th hour on the North Main Street side. Right. Yep. We'll keep that rolling. Yep. Right. Yeah, uh, I would agree. So along those lines, another thing that uh, as a public meeting is uh, around the hazard miti I'm going to get this wrong, local multi-hazard mitigation and municipal vulnerability preparedness plans. That's uh, an acronym. I like yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, Sunderland Emergency Preparedness Team. Um, so I think that the team needs to review a draft and I'll send that around again. But at some point in July, I think we can um, start thinking about when we want to schedule that public. I think it's a public meeting, not a public hearing um, right. to get input on that. And whether you want that to be part of a select board meeting in July or a separate meeting as well. I think, didn't we do our last ones in the, in the select board meeting? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. So we could just do that one in a, in a July meeting as well. Okay. Excellent. Um, and I'll, I'll coordinate with that. I just wanted to take the temperature. And then um, the other thing that I just wanted to bring up is uh, I think about three weeks ago when that big storm came through um, the maple tree oh. in the right field of the baseball field in Riverside park, um, got damaged by the wind and so you know originally I think when it was looked at during the last park grant um, the arborist said it was in fair the tree was in fair condition leaning towards poor now it's had additional damage um, the tree warden thinks that it might you know to avoid future damage and, and to protect what we have going on it, it might be uh, advisable to take the tree down um, I know it provides shade for folks, um, but another thing that CPA is likely going to be paying for is a shaded seating area in, um, along with the kayak shed. So hopefully that will um, take some of the place of the tree and for that. perhaps replanting one. But I just wanted to mention that and, and uh, see if there was any discussion about taking down that tree. Okay. Yeah, moved, moved. I would make a motion to uh, follow up on the tree warden's recommendations for that maple on the town property. Yep, I would agree. Uh, do we have a second? Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero on that motion then. And I think that, that makes the most sense for that. <clears throat> uh, Jeff, have we done anything with the uh, dead elm tree on the... Veterans Memorial. I was just headed there, Tom. Yeah. I, I were on those eight when you blinked on that, Scott. Yep. So, Jeff, it's on the northeast corner. It's still there. Still there, Jeff. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> the, north, the northeast corner, and it's a loss, so we can con contact the folks at the 
Liberty Elm Arboretum Elm. up in New Hampshire. Let them know we have another, uh, this would be our third lost tree. Oh, well, the canopy is filling in and the kill rate is actually appropriate, or excuse me, is aligned with what they suggested it would be. Okay. That's the American Elm Society, isn't it, I think? Yep. Does that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay, we can, we can follow up. Um, so I, can I interject? Uh-oh. You mean, yes. you mean add like Cindy. value? <laughs> Veterans Memorial. I there you actually go. reached out to the um, Liberty Elm Society last fall. Mm -hmm. yep. And um, they didn't really have any trees ready. They had really, really big ones that were a decent price, but it was late in the year and they were pretty much frozen to the ground. And it was going to yep. be a huge effort to try to get something. They told me, and we did have that tree tested to make sure it didn't have Dutch elm. Yep. It did not. Good. Um, yeah. But they said they wouldn't have any trees available until 2021. I don't oh. know exactly when that is yet, but they don't have any trees right now to get. Hey, hey, Sin. Um, yeah. I, 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 would, I would take the tree down out here right now. Yeah, out it, right. Yep. But I wouldn't be too fast to uh, replace it. I'd like to see how it kind of grows in. What are you yeah. thinking, Scott? I'm, I'm looking Did at they... the corner right now, and the corners are filled, are filling in nicely. So we had the one in the southeast corner as well that died and was not replaced. But right. the canopy, the canopy is maybe a less full on the corners, but not for a lack of growth. The other trees, I suspect they'll take up that space pretty quickly. So, so I, I, I'm thinking maybe hold the, you know, we could wait on the tree. I, I would cut it down, see what happens the next year or so. And maybe right. we can take that replacement tree and find a better home for it in particular, maybe in Riverside Park. Yep. Well, and especially if it looks balanced. Yeah. Initially the tree, when I first started talking to them, they wanted $1,200 for a new one for a six footer, which was like the twig that we put on the right side of the memorial that's by itself when that one went. And mm. then as um, she got back to me, she's like, well, we really have these other ones. They were pretty cheap, but again, they were frozen to the ground. They were gigantic. And I did talk to George about it and we really weren't quite sure what their health was like, but I agree. Those corners seem to be a problem. And um, you know, I think waiting it out a little bit probably isn't a bad idea. Yeah, encourage growth from the other sides and see what happens. Yeah, yep. right. And we have to make sure that we properly prune them. Yep. Um, yes. Our landscaper that's been working with us out there, they did do that last last year. Uh, and they've been pruning the bushes as well, which we haven't had done routinely over the years. So we're trying to get a different type of focus out there for the care of all the grounds. Weeding right. is okay. still an issue, but... Um, I don't know how we're going to deal with that yet, but it seems to be okay, but I'm sure it's going to just morph once, you know, summer hits, but. Um, well, they're so weeds, time, they come back. Yeah, they do indeed. Um, yeah. So, you know, we were using um, that one group to come in, but obviously they're not available right now. And uh, we had the school kids come in from Morristar. They did an awesome job, but a lot of companies don't want to deal with weeds. So we have to consider how we want to address those issues in the future because the weeding is a big problem. A town so weeding we party one day, maybe? Well, it's not. Uh, that's the problem, though. We have Women's Club does that frequently, and that's what right. North Star did as well. But the weeds are out there all the time, not just once they are. in the summer. So um, I know when we have landscapers come in, they'll round up it. So which is an option but some of them still need to be pulled out so right. i don't know we have we've tried so different things over the years and it's still a problem for maintenance could i ask mr chair that we dust off the maintenance plan for the veterans memorial and then uh see if, what kind of updating we can do we've got a higher canopy we've got a, a more lush area we've replanted the center we've done a lot so let's see what we can do about updating that plan in the one of our next couple of meetings yeah yep, that makes sense and we also had some bushes that were never put in there were white rhododendrons that were supposed to be put in those were never available yep. and we've never put okay. them in yep. but everything's growing in and i think that's probably okay that they've that they're not in there 
It's amazing what a little time know, can right? do. It's true. I'll get that plan out. Okay. Thank you, Cindy. Great. Thank you. Um, so the, the only other two quick updates, um, we talked a little bit about the new sidewalk grant. Um, so I wanted to give an update on the complete streets. Um, mm. We, we did get a proposal for the engineering work um, that was in line with the last complete streets um, proposal. Um, so sort of just dusted off the, the old contract, uh, sent it to town council just to make sure that there was nothing that needed to be uh, changed. As soon as um, we get that back, I'll, I'll prepare it for you and then we can start getting drawings and contacting all the affected property owners um, with an idea of what, what it's gonna look like um, uh, along those streets. Um, and then the other thing is, just to make you aware that the mass works application round has opened. Um, I don't, I think the thing that we were closest to applying for was uh, school street, but hadn't gotten the um, engineering documents up to where they needed to be for a mass works application. Um, so uh, unless there's something else that, that the board would like to apply for or, um, want to try to get those um, up to speed by the end of August. Uh, I'm not sure that there, there is a project for this round, but I, I did want to mention that in case you had other ideas or, or thoughts on. Okay. So if I could, Mr. Chair, Jeff, yeah. aren't MassWorks projects pretty detail oriented in the application process? Not, not that, aren't they a higher bar? Meaning there's, there's, an economic development component, a housing component, a infrastructure component. There's, you know, integrated in some part of a master plan. And yes, am, am I mistaken on that? No. So from your, from your estimation, uh, there's, we have school street. We know we have, uh, North main street. We know we've got the sidewalk extensions that are already complete that are approved that are going to be heading down toward Hadley road and, you know, et cetera. Um, I don't know, other than wastewater treatment, what would be out there? And even at that, it's a heavy lift to get from here to August to do a mass works application. Right. And, and even the new sidewalk grant thing too, that's a very fast moving process. And we'd, you know, we'd have to really think about what we wanted if we wanted any in that round even, but We've got our we've got our next uh, complete streets phase going out, and that's yep. that's like we've got our engineer hired. We're ready to go on those. The application was complete and it was approved, and it's construction season soon. So that's going to be helpful down towards Silver and I said Hadley Road before. Excuse me, Silver is what I meant to say, um, right. and that's a good thing. But to pivot in June to try to do a MassWorks application seems like a lot of horsepower required. Yep. Tom, what do you think? I think that uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next stop, step along uh, <laughs> Silver Lane and- uh, I'm with you, yeah. Getting that done and I, and, and if at all possible, uh, and we said this before, I'd like to get down and look at Plum Tree. Um, mm -hmm. Because I and oh and and what's the status of the uh, speed limit signs that we are we are getting the, with the radar? Jeff, have you heard anything from uh, George? Oh, that's right. The, we'll uh, follow up. There's one supposed to be on Falls Road, right? Is it right? Um, yeah, and I, I'll follow up. I I had asked and they hadn't come in yet, um, but I I will okay. follow up on those. Um, well, Tom, if I if I could, Mr. Chair, um, yeah. Tom, you mentioned Plum Tree, Jeff. Since we talked about MathWorks, I'm rubbing my eyes right now because that's what happens. Yeah. You talk about applications that size. Um, is there any kind of tie that would uh, integrate Plum Tree sidewalks? Maybe sewer extension? I mean, it's a big lift. We have to start with engineering studies. We have to go through the application process. Have percentage complete of engineering this, 
that is ready to go to bid, as I recall, from Asworks. Yeah, so my experience with Massworks has been that they don't like it when you come in and say, hey, there's, we have this economic development happening and it's going to happen no matter what. Can you please help us make it better by putting in sidewalks and increasing sewers? Mm -hmm. the time to have gone in would, would have been pre-permitting. Oh, yeah. Got it. Saying, uh, we're this is not going to happen unless we increase sewer capacity, unless we have safe sidewalks. Right, um, right, right, right. So the it, infrastructure we have is, is in place, meaning the, the items or the residents to be served. Right. And that's kind of behind the ball of what Massworks does. Right, exactly. Okay. And, and yeah, if I can give an example from Amherst if that's helpful. <laughs> but um, basically the, the North Square project was already permitted, already happening. The town applied for a Massworks grant for sidewalks, for roadway improvements. And they said, you already have the economic development. What are we helping you with? And we said, right, it's right, much right. better. And they said, yeah, nice try. Okay. They like to be in from ground zero, essentially. Yeah. But that's not to say as we go about our, our goals for coming, you know, years, that this isn't something that an area, whatever it is, pick one, plum tree, whatever, whatever it is, sewer treatment plant expansion, something, can't be um, part of that visioning process. And then MassWorks or insert you know, mass or federal money uh, name here can't be sought out once it's fully vetted out. Yep, absolutely. Got it. Thank you. All right. So I see in front of us, if I could, Mr. Chair, also yes, we get a, we get a we get a blue heron outdoor dining platform drawing. I know it's not on specific to our agenda tonight but jeff yep. is this conceptual or are we they pulling permits and going for it so um they uh, i got this um this evening uh, okay and you know i, so I, it's, I it's, sent it's, it around it's, Sorry. Yeah. I was to say it's new to all of us. So we have a we have a point of discussion post building inspector, I assume. Uh build, building inspector received it this evening after I got it. Um, okay. I've not heard back. Um but was wasn't sure if the select board would be comfortable taking action contingent on board of health review uh, building inspector or wanted to get all that information up front. Um, but I felt like it would, it would be good to at least share um, that, that this is what was uh, being thought about. So if, if I could at first blush, uh, Mr. Chair, if I could. Mm. So yeah. we, have a, we have a declared emergency, right, regarding outdoor dining. I, I completely right. understand that. And we're thankful to the board and boards of health and zoning folks for letting us uh, make these exceptions. I look at this, and I say this in the context of the fact that I love the Blue Heron and all that they do. This looks like a permanent structure. Yep. And because take, of the, I mean, all of it looks like a permanent structure. So I would like before anything, before the, if, the, if there is any action by the board, how does this fit in with an emergency order regarding, regarding outdoor dining that's to be lifted by August 1st? So if, if there's a significant investment by a business to make a permanent structure, What's our what's our end game? Right, we're 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 waving we're waving some of those zoning and planning board pieces during the declaration of emergency. This right. this this gets built. It's going to stay there. Right. It's not like. Oh. Um, but again, that's me being. That's my inner Libra. I'm cursed with that. Right. Well, it, it, go ahead, Tom. It, and, and I, I would I would say Scott that 
that I, I don't, I'm not telling the blue heron how to run their business. No, I agree, Tom. Sa- you know? I'm in the same boat. And, and, and I'm, I'm telling them, and, and I would tell, and, and if I was, I, I, I would recommend that Jeff writes a letter, say, you know, if we, if we, uh, I don't have a problem because it, it's, it's, they're putting together what they're, they're saying. I would put in thing that, that they, I would remind them it's a temporary structure that yep. uh, it needs, it need it will not needs, it will come down upon. Perfect. You know what I mean? Oh, I do. Right. That, that's, I think say that up front. That's, that's the escape ramp I was looking for. I would, I would hate, mm-hmm. I would hate to see if any, any business, take advantage of the declaration of emergency for some permanent advantage. Right. I agree. And, and, but I would just, I would just, I would state it, you know, that it's a temporary that we right now it, we run it through whatever the date is. And, and, you know, it's, it's, I, I would say it in Latin if I remember the term. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you it's not at the top does. of your head. <laughs> Well, I, Mrs. Smith, my uh, Latin teacher, may be a little disappointed in me right now, but I don't remember uh, it off the top of my canagan. But uh, she's she's but looking I, down I, I on you. Say, you know, I, I would say, look, I mean, I mean, you, you built it; it was temporary. I understand why they would do that because they're they're a high end restaurant, so you can't you can't have people eating on blacktop. Totally yeah. get it. So, right. I mean. I'm, I'm sure they, they they studied it, and I I saw I went by what was it uh, Dove's Nest, and they looked like they had a couple of tables outside their their place. So yep. So again, right. area it, area of concern, not an area of focus. I, Jeff, I agree with you, but I would just I would just say, hey, look, just I don't I don't have a problem with what they presented, but it needs to come down when when we lift the order. Right, because when you right. go through Northampton, you see they've essentially set out, you know, concrete temporary barriers to cordon off seating for restaurants. But at that time, later, those all just get picked up and things will go back to normal. So, all right. I agree with you, Scotty. Because we do want to encourage as much help as we can through all this, but you're right. <clears throat> So do you want next week um, confirmation that they understand that it will be removed when the emergency is over and feedback from Board of Health, building inspector? Yes. Um, yep. Okay. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. And I see the last item on our agenda before public comment is a COVID-19 finances update. And you got the... A, letter that you attached here right jeff yes yeah um good no it, you know it basically um you know I, I think it was in a early april um i asked that when i had asked uh, department heads to review their budgets we sort of had a an inkling that revenues were not going to come in as anticipated um, ask them to look at that, ask them to minimize expenditures, um, you know, filter purchases above a certain dollar threshold um, right. through myself to, just to keep track of what's going on. Um, and given that we don't have much of a clearer idea of what revenues are going to look like yeah. at this point, extend right. uh, sort of the, hey, let's minimize expenditures Let's um, continue to, to vet um, larger purchases uh, just until we do have a better idea. And, you know, from my perspective, that's probably going to be about at least about six months. Um, but with the caveat that if we, ha- if we have a better idea sooner, then perhaps we would change it sooner. Right. We would take so, action. So if I could, Mr. Chair, I like mm-hmm. the letter. Uh, We know that our first update, I'm looking at one, two, the last sentence of the third paragraph, extending the following two requests from the first fiscal update, which was April 2. I would suggest that we take that and extend it to uh, November 1st. Add add language here that says extending this, extending this, and I would say not request, requirement 
to yep. April, to November 1st, 11 1. That's going to be kind of like the beginning of the revenue estimations. And that'll help us with our uh, sanity check. So to the remainder of the language, minimize to the greatest extent possible, expenditures not essential and not emergency goods and services, and submit all expenditures in excess of $500 to the town administrator for review. Uh, having a timeline on that in that third paragraph is going to be important. Um, right. so, so department heads know uh, that you know, we, we're going to pay attention to that revenue stream. Right, and we'll reevaluate it at that time, or yeah, as we I mean, go we along, to. really. Yep, that that was what Thanks. we pitched to. That's what we pitched to town meeting. That's what we pitched to our staff. Yep. You know, let's let's find out a way to, you know, put a date on it and follow up. All right, that makes sense. You make that an edit to it, Jeff. There. Yeah, and then along the same lines, the the first half of the uh, first sentence in the next paragraph. Just, I will continue to track. Yep. Get rid of yep. I expect. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Makes sense. I mean, yep. that's that's what we have designed as a plan to stay in contact with this year. So that captures it from a, from my perspective, from the language, uh, and then having an X check in be, you know, the mid part of what's Q two for the fiscal year would be helpful. It's going to be interesting to see how things pan out. So, all right. And uh, all right. So, Jeff, are you going to, send, if I could, Mr. Chair, Jeff, are yeah. you going to send this to uh, uh, Superintendent Modesto as well as Ben Barshevsky? I know it's crossing a line, but a nice reminder every now and then wouldn't hurt. Yep. I can do that. Yeah, that's excellent. They rep they represent a significant piece of our budget. So even if it's a Little cordial bit. ask. Yep. Yeah, I can say this is this is what we're sending to all the de town departments is, and right. we respectfully request that, you know, um, some similar structure. We know it's school committee expenditure at the elementary school as well as the elementary excuse me, the frontier school committee, they're in charge of the purse strings, but you know this is what we're doing. Let's ask for their help and encourage their involvement. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Yeah, anything you want to add, Tom, or are you all set? All set. All set. All right. Um, and now we've reached the public comment section of our meeting. I don't know if anybody has any public comments at all. Hey, guys. Not, not really a comment. Uh, John Pelletier, um, I own uh, 86 Old Amherst Road, the little parcel in the back there that abuts the mm -hmm. elementary school. Um, and currently live in Newton, won't be a resident for a few more years. Um, okay. So can't, can't participate there. Um, but I just wanted to uh, kind of make a note on some of the, the COVID relief funds from the state for kind of quick build infrastructure. Um, what we're looking at in Newton is, and the mayor has been looking at um, some kind of quick build options for getting kids to school uh, for folks that may not be comfortable with uh, buses. Um, and whether that's elementary school or, you know, it's a little bit harder with you because with the, with the high school, middle school, next town over, um, maybe a little bit tricky. But, you know, thinking along those lines, whether that's, you know, improvements or working with South Deerfield on improvements on 47 across the river, um, you know, and you're part of it, I don't know how it applies to a state road versus your own, um, you know, a town owned, um, but something along those lines, even to the extent of cones and, and of those types of things, that's what we're looking at here. Um, just kind of thinking about if folks aren't going to be as comfortable with buses perhaps as they were in the past, you know, what are some other options to kind of minimize the additional car traffic that will likely, you know, come in its place, which is certainly 
more of an issue with Newton, a um, little bit less yeah. of an issue out where you guys are, but um, yep. nonetheless. Actually, it's, it's, it's a pretty heady issue out here, and you spend yeah. three light cycles trying to turn left on North Main Street. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, that's, just a, that's just a normal yep. evening at 7 here. Yeah, you know, but, I hear um, you. <laughs> Nonetheless. Right. Um, just, just thinking about that, that's kind of the focus that we're looking at, you know, to the extent of, you know, some of the narrower roads, we may shut it down, make it one way for a small section to allow kind of two way bike traffic on one side with some cones, you know, so thinking along those lines might be a potential direction, um, when you're looking at some of those quick build funds, um, uh, at least that's what we're looking at here. Um, great. So we can talk to the superintendent, see what yeah. they're what they're talking about yeah yeah because i would i would hope they're they're obviously looking at what options are for the fall for for busing right. and maybe a little bit easier out there than it would be here just by the nature of your caseloads are, are much lower um and probably the risk is, is a little bit lower than, than what we're seeing here in, in the boston area but um figured i'd figured i'd put that out there um i appreciate, appreciate that. that yeah so keep I, up, uh, keep actually, up the work guys yeah. <laughs> i actually lived in newton before i moved out here so there you go. i'm in um, i'm in newtonville so just uh, that, that, star market over the pike for, that's <laughs> very close to where i lived i could walk to the star market yep oh, yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> meeting dad's but I, I i know that um there has been and i've noticed an increase in auto traffic and people dropping off rather than you know, taking the bus too. So that's, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. It's just, you know, we're, right. it's, it's already an issue in the best of times <laughs> to get more people to ride the bus, especially high school, middle school, exactly. um, you know, let alone uh, otherwise. <laughs> so um, just something yep. to kind of think about as you guys are musing forward. And, I used to work for the mayor's office, city of Salem, and was part of some of the mass works um, grant work there. And I will echo what uh, the wonderful new town administrator said. Uh, it's a pain in the butt. If you're trying to do something after the fact, they're likely not going to do anything. So yeah. <laughs> that's good to know. Uh, yeah. You know, we had a couple um, Brownfield redevelopments and the timelines aligned. Um, so, you know, both, large mixed use residential came in, you know, kind of, you know, the initial permit came in after the initial mass work application had already been submitted. Obviously there were communications, you know, that happened ahead of time, but um, yeah, once you're looking at that. So uh, probably not All worth right. your time at this point. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, John. So with that, we got our, our next meeting is Monday, June twenty second at uh, six thirty on the same Zoom channel, I guess we could call it. Uh, okay. and, uh, I was just gonna say thank you. All right, uh, we have a motion to adjourn. How about that? I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye.